Hey, what are you doing this weekend? Head over Point Pierce or something. Get a feed of butterfish. All my gear's up at Mum's. I'll, I'll just head up there and grab all that. I'll meet you at your place. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I'll grab some bacon legs. Nugget. My name's Clem Newchurch. Uh, I grew up in a little town called Odinga Beach. My father's side of the family is Aboriginal. My father's parents grew up in Point Pierce. It's uh, on the old peninsula in South Australia. The traditional lands of the Narunga people, Point Pierce was established as an Aboriginal mission in 1868, with people from many surrounding nations being sent to the mission. So the Narunga people of Point Pierce are known informally as the Butterfish people, as catching butterfish is a cultural practice that we've been doing for thousands of years. Some of my earliest memories were fishing, some of my greatest memories were fishing. Me and Dad would walk down the beach with the fishing rods and set up at night time, catching King George off the shore down there, which is pretty rare nowadays. Something that I did till, you know, probably until Mum and Dad broke up. Our whole life was fishing. Your dad would spearfish off of the beach, so he'd swim out to the reef, and I always had an excuse not to, because I'm a bit terrified of sharks. One day he said, you're coming out spearfishing with me. So I had my snorkel and mask, and he was a really strong swimmer. He was a champion swimmer. So he was swimming out to the reef at Port Wollonga, and he was quite far ahead of me, and I could see the shore, and then I could see your dad still swimming strongly out to the reef. And then I saw this fin, and it just went doo 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 doo, as your dad was swimming, and I was going, Clap! And as he turned around, the fin went do 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 do, and it went down again. So he said, what? And I said, that was a fin. He was laughing. No, no, that wasn't. And he started swimming again, and the fin came up again. <laughs> it just looked big and hairy and scary, and I just went, no! And I was swimming, swimming, swimming back to shore, and all I could hear was your dad laughing. <laughs> so I thought it was hilarious, because it was a dolphin. Your dad also had a boat. He spent heaps of time tinkering with, and Papa had come down, and try and help him get it going and... I remember playing on it when I was a kid. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Oh, there was a good photo of Papa and... Yeah, oh yeah, Papa's like... in there too, I saw that. There, yeah. working oh, yeah. on the boat with your dad. Yeah. We did actually tow it up to Point Piers eventually. It's a good looking boat, really. Yeah, it just didn't really work very well. Oh. That's the photo I want to show kids at school. You want to see a fish? <laughs> Here's a fish. Mum's got some pretty good stories from back in the day. I don't get to see her enough, you know. Storytelling's always been a big part of Aboriginal culture. Without the stories, we wouldn't know how we're meant to live and how we're meant to be. One really big thing is making sure that we capture these stories and pass them on so that our elders are, I guess, honoured would be the word. Their legacy is honoured. You know, I definitely missed that connection with my father and, and it was something that I didn't expect, having that gap between, you know, seeing family. What time is this, Brad? You're a little bit late there, now, are we? I'd met Lyle Jr. on his 18th birthday. I think I was mid-20s, and we had an amazing night celebrating his 18th. That weekend, we went out spearfishing and speared my first butterfish. Uh, I don't know where my goggles is. I think I lost them. We both got the same kind of drive to go out, get a feed of fish, make sure that we're dropping fish off to our elders. If we got enough, keep a big one that we'd take back home to Uncle Lyle and Honey Penny and have a big feed. I got the biggest last time, I reckon. No, you didn't. I got the biggest. No. Yeah, I reckon the last couple of times. Oh, that's right. Biggest. My rubber broke. All right, we can have that one. All right then, let's knock it on there, let's get going. Been waiting all day for you. Normally it's me waiting for you. Oh, come on, bros. We argue about who's going to get the biggest and the most, mainly. Yeah, that's, that's a big thing. I think that's kind of something that happened on Point Pierce for a long time. We all do it. Something to give each other a little bit of... <laughs> a little bit of shit about, really. Well, you remember that when uh, me, you, Karen was on the boat? Yeah. And you was posing around with my big fish? <laughs> That's because I take a better photo of this. I didn't know how to hold it, but you, I think it's all over your Facebook as well, getting all my I likes. I get a good photo. I've got a good photo of that. You're out of practice. You haven't even been in the water the last couple of times. <laughs> oh, my Lord. So you don't want to reverse it? No, I don't know how to. 
I struggled with identity in high school and we got into different types of music and used to skateboard and things like that. So I kind of clung onto a few different things, but I always felt, especially kind of reflecting back now, that there was something missing. It wasn't until later in life, one of my mates suggested to me one day, why don't you come crayfishing with us? Started going on holidays down the southeast, and Nat, she used to say, oh, okay, every time we go, you always get the biggest crayfish, or you always get the most in your pot. And that kind of reignited my passion, my love for fishing, and I kind of realised that, yeah, I do have this connection with the ocean. So I reverse it. Yep. You might have to push it off. Yeah, I'll just go boom. Yeah. I'll try and do it real quick. So yep. It just comes off. Feel cold or No, that's all right. It's gonna be it's gonna be warm. What's going on here? Shame. <laughs> Shame start. Scared me for a second. <laughs> It was actually through their old hockey coach, Jake C, who grew up next door to us. So I eventually kind of got in touch with my dad again. Oh, look, it's getting even calmer now. I think that was the first number that I called, or it might have been the second. That kind of took me a while to work out what was going on in the conversation. So I rang up and was like, oh, yeah, this is Clem Newchurch. Yeah, who's this? Like, Clem Newchurch, who's this? Like, yeah, it's Clem Newchurch. Who am I talking to? It took me a little bit of a, you know, a couple of, couple of seconds to kind of work out that I was talking to my dad. When I worked it out, I was like, Dad, it's your son, it's me. Where do you live? So he, he gave me his address and I drove around there. I can have seen a big butterfish down there. You can see him? Yeah, nice one, I reckon. I didn't realise, but he'd made a bit of an effort to walk outside and greet me. While I had a chat with my grandmother over that week, she mentioned to me that she didn't think that he had a lot left in him. She didn't think that he'd be alive much longer. I definitely feel like I was kind of being drawn towards going back after so many years. Yeah. <laughs> after reconnecting, it was almost a year to the day that my dad passed away. And, you know, I definitely count myself lucky that we did have a year to spend with him. He's just waiting for me to jump in. Normally, we swim together. We don't like swimming by ourselves. One of the things that I dreamed of, basically, was to just go fishing with Dad. Taking the lead. Taking the lead. That's not a bigger one. That's not a piggy size, still counts. Not a big one, huh? That, that one. If I got that one, it would have been. That caught a shooter one. The caught a shooter one. That crab's bigger than the fish. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that is important for me is to make sure I'm feeding my family. I think that would have made Dad happy.
beat you by lips. I beat you by a butterfish head. What makes butterfish significant for us? It's just something that, that, that's that been there since the year dot. It's a stable diet. We used beer guns and mast flippers. Yeah. How did the old people do it? I grew up using harpoons. It was four prongs, three prongs. Had a long stick, so about three metres, four metres. Yeah. They'd smoke themselves with an the oil bush here. It tracks the butterfish to them because they're an inquisitive fish. They come up and swim in front of you and they cock their tail from the surface and you just spear them like that. Everyone would, you know, measure up. Oh, mine's bigger than yours. You know. <laughs> and the competition was started way back then. Yeah. Every year in January, we have the Point Pierce Guinebra butterfishing competition. Guinebra just means a butterfish, big butterfish. What's your memories of when I first started coming home and seeing Papa? When you're growing up and we don't see you growing up with us, with the nucleus of, of the Narunga people, you know, we're just stunned that you came back, you know, and you're connected with Lyle and Tyler and me and Papa say, just let them go now, your grandfather, he said, that's good. They back together, let Lyle teach them, show them the land here and flood their brains with everything that, that's Narunga. It's amazing, you know, to have you reconnect with, with family. Papa knows his shack here, so now the peg's just waiting for a feed of fish, so we're gonna drop a couple of fish to her. Bring it in. Feed a fish here for you. Oh, that's good, butterfish too. Yeah, we got a few today. Yeah, I reckon. I want a little one. Oh, this one? That's enough for myself, yeah. You got him? That's good enough for me. You were talking before about fishing off the shore. Yes, I've been doing that when I was 14, 15, when we lived down the beach. We go for worms and the seaweed then sit and wait for that tide to come in. Old ladies all used to be lined up, you know. Someone would chuck their line up across the line and then that's what the trouble come, Big you know. <laughs> <laughs> slips, they used to say, oh, slips. Yeah, we know all about slips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gonna give the mother fella some. I'll drop off some fish to another tub. She'd like that, especially when it's fresh. Oh, here's the boys with my fish. Well, nice Thank butterfish you. for you. Thank you. My first fish used to always go to Papa. I was always making sure I was dropping fish off to Papa. And... Not because you have to, but culturally, it's a normal, accepted thing to remember without being reminded to give to an elder Nunga. That's customary. Not have to be done, you just got to remember it by nature. It's a normal thing to do out of respect for elders. How old are they? Yeah, the I today, that's, yeah, all, that's what I mean. Yesterday. It's not yesterday, it's yeah. about five hours. Yeah, tap on the freezer. Yeah. Stay fresh. Yeah, good. I definitely miss that connection with my father and having that gap between seeing family. But when I come back to Point Pierce, all my grandfathers, aunties and uncles, my cousins, all we experience in reconnecting is love. <laughs>